thank you so much for agreeing to be recorded. So today we'll have an agenda. So first of all, I will talk about the ethos of the program. What is the vision and mission of the EDD? And then I would walk through the online and the live virtual modalities, which are entirely new for this coming fall um, admission. And then we'll have some distinctive features that I would like to talk about during the presentation. So first of all, let's um, take a look at the ethos of the EDD. Our program is vibrant, student-centered, rigorous, and with a unique focus on global citizenship. As you know, Webster University is unique because of its emphasis on global citizenship. We are a global institution, and so we have campuses all over the world, like in Europe, Asia, um, Africa, and also, um, and also North America. So as you see, for example, this coming June, there is a conference in Geneva. And so some of the doctoral faculty and myself, we will present in that conference as well. So we have unique connections to the world. Our vision of the program is to transform the status quo of inequities in the educational systems of the world. And so to go along with that vision, our mission is to prepare scholar practitioners who would have the passion and competence to make a difference in the world. So today I invited two doctoral students. Later on, you will, you will, you will see you know, what they present as transformative learning and then what it means to have the passion and competence to make a difference. So some of the recent achievements of the program um, is that we have me and 11 doctoral students from the program have um, just published an article in um, Sage on a uh, doing research online. And this is about how to adapt a research methodology amid COVID-19. And so uh, it's just published. So you can take a look at that if you look at our newsletter. And also we have Jenny Arnold today, she was invited to write a book chapter. Jenny, can you quickly talk about the, 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 the title of that book? Right, <clears throat> so the original book was called Grit and it included 40 women's stories of power and success. And the, um, the woman who is putting all the, the, the stories together is now doing a four part series of deconstructing grit. So each book will have its own or each Part of the acronym will have its own book. So growth, um, resilience, intention, and tenacity. And I am writing a chapter in the first book of growth. Wonderful, Jenny. And then for me, I just recently published another article in a Reggio Emilia journal. And then I'm also an editor for an upcoming book that is published by Rutledge. So this is about how to do the Reggio, um, Reggio informed, Reggio inspired approach in USA. So, um, so we have a lot of exciting publications all along because our program really advocate for our students to work together with faculty member so that we can produce research service and also you know exciting transformative materials for our vision and mission. So if you look up at the um, link, we have a newsletter. So each semester we will publish a newsletter that will talk about our students' achievements, what kind of publications that we have done and what kind of conference um, presentations we have done and some of the upcoming journal information so that we can engage our students to work together. So as you know, I'm the director of the program and so I would like to quickly introduce myself. Um, I was born in China, raised in Hong Kong and I joined the Ohio State University with a PhD, graduated in 2012. So um, now I'm an associate professor at Webster University so and also the director of EDD. So my personal ethos, because I'm a first generation immigrant in the United States, I have a passion in serving the minoritized populations through research, teaching, advising, and service. And my mission also go along with my ethos, which is to become a voice and advocate for transforming the status quo for minoritized populations in the world. So as you see, my ethos, my mission also go hand in hand with the vision and mission of the program. So our flagship emphasis in the EDD is called transformative learning in the global community. So as you see this title, a lot of people might have the questions, what is transformative learning, right? Mm -hmm. And so today I have um, 
I have the pleasure to introduce Ms. Jenny Ono and also Ms. Trisette Dixon. So Jenny is currently a second year doctoral student and a fourth grade teacher in Kirkwood. And Trisette is a second year doctoral student and a director of Stu School of Communications internship program. They're coming to tell you a little bit more about transformative learning. So Jenny and Trisette, would you guys explain, you know, what, what, what does transformative learning mean to you? So Jenny, do you want to go first or should I? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go Trisette okay. and then you can go, you can go first on the second one. Sounds great. Awesome. So transformative learning for me as a classroom teacher and um, an educator for 32 years is anything that challenges the status quo. Um, anything that pushes against the uncomfortableness of systemic oppression, um, anything that flips the script on what has been done over and over and over and over in education, because clearly we are not successful. So transformative learning is just that. Thank you, so, Jenny. How about just that? Thank you so much, Jenny. So uh, as Jenny has spoke about, I am a career development professional. And I do embrace the foundational idea of transformative learning as lifelong learners being able to adjust their thinking based upon added information and new experiences. So every day I get to witness transformative learning through the experiences of my students making the transition from the academic world to the world of work. So as Dr. Lee spoke, I am the director of the internship program here at Webster University in the School of Communications. And students begin their journey as an intern with the knowledge they have gained as a student, applying the skills and what they've learned in the classroom from their field of study. And then they no longer have to read about it. They are doing it, they are experiencing, they're building confidence and imagining their future and preparing themselves to contribute to the workplace. And this new experience not only can change their lives, but can have a generational impact because of where they position themselves as a professional and as a citizen. And so that is what I view transformative learning and what I get to practice every day. Fantastic. So then the, the, the next question is that who is a transformative educator? So since Jenny gave me the floor first this time, I want to talk a little bit about my own personal experiences. So when I think of transformative educators, I think of my high school principal. Her name was Betty Wheeler. I admired her passion and she was the founder of Metro High School, which is a college prep magnet school in the St. Louis public school system. So Betty was a African-American educator in the St. Louis public system before leading Metro and Metro embodied racial equity by enrolling diverse, intellectually inquisitive students from both St. Louis City and St. Louis County. And they were all learning and growing together. And when I attended, they called it the school without walls because our learning happened everywhere. So Betty's dream was to create an educational environment that went beyond the classroom and embraced the city, its rich culture and all the learning experiences it had to offer. And through her example, I was able to understand very early what a transformative educator truly is. And it's someone who has a vision, a passion for learning and learners and embraces the unknown and makes it a new reality. Fantastic, Trisette. Trisette, I should have gone first. That was a genius answer. <laughs> You're so I, brilliant. I paved the way for you. <laughs> You're so brilliant. You're so brilliant. Um, for me, a transformative educator is absolutely anybody. Um, I consider educators, teachers, and classrooms to be transformative. One of my heroes and, and mentors is Dr. Bettina Love. I follow her teachings and her philosophies. Um, my students are actually transformative educators. My lessons in my classroom empower them to then go home and talk to their families. Um, one of our 
our standards in fourth grade in the state of Missouri is teaching students about the American Revolution. And all that children have known and seen and heard is from a white male perspective historically as all of our textbooks have still been written in that way. So 90% of our curriculum when we get to this teaching point is talking about whose story is not being shared. All of these people still lived in the country at the time, but whose story is not being shared. And the kids get so well versed at this question that they start asking me when we get to future lessons. They say, Miss Ono, who's not being represented? And I say, I don't know, you tell me. So I know for a fact they go home and teach their families because at parent teacher conferences and the end of the year, parents will say, thank you so much for prompting discussion in our house about issues that we don't normally talk about. So um, I think transformative educators are anybody willing to step out and step into it. Wonderful, it's fantastic. Thank you so much, Jenny and Trisette. So I know that all of you are excited to know some of the problems of practice that we're trying to solve in our dissertation. So these are some of the current dissertation topics that, you, that I'm listing here for you to take a look. So for example, the first one is something about school leadership, you know, how to have trauma-informed school leadership in um, the current crisis world of education. And then the next one talks about women's voices in um, education community. And then I know that there is one from Jenny here, that's radical transformation of the power language dynamic in the K-5 classroom. So Jenny, can you talk more, a little bit more, what is radical transformation and why is that needed in today's world? Right, so I think I mentioned a little bit in my answer to the first question, education hasn't changed in several, since its inception. It's still kids in desks, it's still kids receiving information from a teacher expert. So radical transformation to me is changing the whole structure, taking it down to the ground and rebuilding it up. And one of the big things is the power language in schools is an Eurocentric language. Children are being taught only Eurocentric language and then measured by that on standardized tests. And we all know that there are many languages, there are many dialects, there are many home languages being spoken that are just as valid as that, ego, that ethnocentric um, language in schools. So my, my plan, my proposal is to do some deep study into how we can change the system and actually honor languages in our classroom still, I mean, we all know that the, the mainstream language, the money language is still that Eurocentric language. However, we can still honor home languages in the classroom and scaffold and build students for success through that. Um, so that's that's really what I'm focused on, Dr. Lee. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. And since Trisette is here, I also want to gain some insight from Trisette. Trisette, can you quickly share your dissertation topic? So yes, and the title is a working title and has changed a little bit from uh, the time that we started, but the title of my dissertation is A Fork in the Road to Graduation, a case study of undergraduate African-American students a decision to participate in academic internships. And so my study focuses on the African-American students in a PWI, which is a predominantly white institution, um, I want to amplify the voices of African American students and their journey to graduation. And in this particular study, I would like to look at the reasons and decisions made to either participate or not to participate when given that option in a high impact experiential learning opportunity like internships. So it is my goal in the study is to amplify the voices, but also bring a, about transformation in the way that we support African-American students in their college experience. Because as statistics tell us, uh, there is definitely a lower rate of graduation for students of color at predominantly white institutions. Although the 
there is an increase in admission, getting them to the finish line and graduating um, comes with its challenges. And one of the things about the internships, because that is near and dear to my heart and also being director, uh, is that it is a high impact opportunity for students to gain experience before they leave their graduation program. And so our study, my study is to actually look at the reason why they would not choose that. Fantastic. Thank you, Trista. Thank you, Jenny, for joining us today. You Thank can you. log off or stay on it in case you, you don't have more time, but it's up to you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. Thank you. So for the rest of you, so the online EDD this year coming along in the fall is about transformative learning in the global community, which is our flagship emphasis. This emphasis is intended for scholar practitioners who aspire be to become higher educational faculty, leaders in schools, government agencies, nonprofit organizations, and in various educational settings. It's a three-year program and with 40 credits requirement. Of course, again, the actual duration and total number of credits depend on the completion of dissertation and scheduling with dissertation committee. So as you see, this is the, the course plan, um, the three-year degree plan. So year one, you would take content area courses. Year two, you would take research methods courses. And year three would be dissertation credits. So some of you might be interested to know more about each year and what are the courses that are required in the program. So you can see year one, the content courses are mostly related to global histories and politics and education, you know, transformative lens in educational technologies, transformative leadership in school for equity and ethics, social justice and transformative learning. Um, and then year one has a very unique course called a doctoral apprenticeship. So the doctoral apprenticeship is to match our doctoral students one on one with a faculty member. So these faculty member would work with the students with some options. So for example, they can co-author an article to be published. They can co-author a conference paper to be presented. They can create a new course, or they can even think of a service learning project that would gear towards completing of the dissertation project. So it has a, a, a various, um, you know, it has four choices in the course, and we might think about others as well. But it gives you the flexibility to develop that personal one on one working relationship with a faculty member. And oftentimes, the faculty mentor will become your dissertation chair or a committee member in the future, so that you can start to gain that one on one relationship with a faculty member member early on. So second year will have mostly dissertation writing courses. Um, quantitative and qualitative research methods courses, and then we will gear that towards preparing you to write and draft your dissertation. So the prospectus and dissertation writing course is another one-on-one -on -one course that you will work with, the, with your prospective dissertation chair. So in this course, you will start to draft the first three chapters of your dissertation. And then in summer, you would take a course called Comprehensive Exam and Prospectus Defense. So you would take the exam and also in the end have a chance to defend your first three chapters so that you can start your dissertation project in the fall and in, in year three. So year three would be all the credits geared towards the dissertation writing. So that is the three year plan and it's very streamlined. So it's streamlined so that it can prepare you to complete the program likely within three years time frame. So this year, we, we have also a new exciting modality called a live virtual. So the online track is for students who prefer asynchronous because it allows the maximum flexibility. You know, if you have, if you live in a different time zone than St. Louis, Missouri, and the time would not work for you, you might prefer the online modality. But we also want to start to run the live virtual track. So the live virtual track has exactly the same coursework requirement except for the residency. So residency is only for online students. So for the live virtual, you will meet Monday night, 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. Central Time via Zoom. The classes are 100% Zoom. So you save commuting time. And it also allows for students who prefer face-to-face -face interactions with professors and peers via Zoom. So let's say if you live out of state, but then your time difference work well with our Monday night time, and then um, you, you still prefer to join the classes, you know, via Zoom so you can have that face-to-face -face time with your 
professors and peers, this would be a good option. And then if you live overseas, if the time difference also work for you, that would be awesome to consider as well. So we have online modality and the live virtual for transformative learning in the global community in the fall. Some of the distinctive features of our EDD program is that, as we mentioned, it's a holistic, well-rounded approach. So we focus on practice, theory, and research so that you know, our graduates can become higher ed faculty members, you know, they can work in government agencies, they can work for nonprofit organizations. It will be a wide range of career opportunities when you graduate. We emphasize on equity-centered transformative leadership. So as you see the presentation from Jenny and from Trisette, so we talked about how to bring up the voices of minoritized populations in the world. So that would be the, 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 the emphasis of our program. Um, we have global citizenship in mind, right? So when we talked about global citizenship, we are very aware of how to have culturally relevant pedagogies in our coursework and in the program design. We are student-centered, which means that we never, we, if you have a question, we always come, we, we always try our best to answer that as quickly as possible. If you look for a job, you know, you can rely upon Dr. Lee and the doctoral faculty to write you recommendations. When you need to look for a job that's relevant to what you're interested in, we will be happy to give you some practice, some coaching, you know, some information about how to land those jobs and how to prepare you for those jobs. So for example, one of the main things for our doctoral program is to start to have our students build their own personal website year one. So they start to make connections and then use social media like ResearchGate and also LinkedIn and all of those social media platforms to connect with the experts in the world and to explore that networking um, possibility for the future of career development. Um, the other really good distinctive feature is that you would have a very close working relationship with faculty and peers if you join our program. So for example, the doctoral apprenticeship, you know, you're one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member, and then we really value that one-on-one -on -one, um, faculty and student experience. So this is one of the things that is a unique feature of our program. We also offer other emphasis like educational leadership, special education, and TESOL in the program. And this year we joined CPAD as, an, as a program member. So CPAD is the Carnegie, Carnegie Project on Educational Doctorate. So if you look up their website, it, it's a consortium that have conferences, journal, and also unique socialization opportunities for all the universities that offer EDD. So we are a member. So we will also start to have that networking experiences and also gain knowledge from other institutions and share that with you in the program. And then our program has transparent policy with web-based handbooks. So everything is online. You can go to our site and look up the handbook and all of the guidelines are very clear. So it's designed for, again, if you are thinking of your career paths for university professors, higher education administrators, diversity officers or directors in educational institutions, researchers or administrators in nonprofit organizations, and administrators for government agencies. So we have a link there at the bottom. You can click that link. We have listed some of the career prospects and we also cross reference with some of the salary range, you know, using other websites and information that we can gain online. Of course, we cannot be responsible for all of those salary ranges, but at least you have a reference point of, you know, this is the career path that I can get into. Our program is um, has affordable tuition. So now it's 40 credit requirement, and each credit hours is $930. Um, so you know, as you compare that total tuition amount with the other institutions, you can gain an insight of how our online EDD is an affordable online EDD. Because the range of other universities, you know, FTC, University ABCD, um, a lot of them are actually charging about 80,000 to 120,000 US dollars for the online EDD. So for some of the local applicants, there is like, we have FAQs, which is frequently asked questions. From 13 to 15, you can look up some districts, school districts actually offer pay bump for doctoral degree holders. So you would make more money once you graduate with a doctoral degree. And then also there are school districts that offer tuition reimbursement or scholarship to the program. So I have more information. If you click that FAQ link, you should see more information. 
So next, I have some student testimonials that is really exciting to share. So the first one is from Shafan Curry Hopgood. She is currently a doctoral student in educational leadership. She's also an assistant principal in St. Louis Public Schools. May I invite a volunteer? So just be aware that your voice and your image, you, if you show your video, will be recorded for publicity materials. If you agree to that, please, can you raise your hand and then help us read the experience from Shafan? Any volunteer? If not, it's okay. I can um, invite Eskaya. Eskaya, would you read the, um, the quote from Shafan? Of course. Um, so Shafan is an assistant principal at St. Louis Public Schools. She said her experience in the EDD program has proven to be absolutely powerful. I've been challenged in a plethora of ways. This program has caused me to dive deeper into critically thinking about the areas of research that I believe are most impactful. My research was proving to be challenging, yet life-changing. I have a stronger understanding of the ways that I can investigate trauma as it relates to school leadership. Thank you, Eskaya. So the next we have Chazette, you know, who joined us today. Chazette is a doctoral student in transformative learning in the global community. So her, she, she also has a testimonial here. Can I invite any volunteer, who, you know, if you agree to be videotaped and then also show your video and your voice? Any volunteer? I'm happy to. Thank you, Sarah. Nice to see you, Sarah, today. Nice Thank to you. see you, too. This is very exciting. Um, the camaraderie of the cohort and genuine encouragement from each professor and supplemental faculty and support staff has aided me in building the confidence necessary as a doctoral student in the program. It is truly empowering to embrace my transformation over the course of this doctoral program and arrive at the time in which I can proudly call myself an educational researcher. Thank you, Sarah. And nice to see you today. Thank you. So thank you. So we have admission requirements. So this is what you would like to think about when you're applying to our program. It requires all undergraduate and graduate transcripts with evidence of a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, cumulative GPA of 3.0 for graduate coursework, three letters of rep recommendation, application fee of $125. It will be waived for alumni, current Webster University faculty, staff, and students. And there will be a virtual interview. So um, after July 1st, that's the deadline, I will start to arrange for these virtual interviews. So if you are an international student, I want to say hi to all the international students. We welcome you. As you know, I'm personally, I came to United States as an international student. I have gone through all the transitions, you know, from international student to a US citizen. And so I understand all of the challenges and I would like to provide the best possible educational program to assist you, you know, in this journey. So as you know, our program has a focus on global citizenship and culturally relevant pedagogy, which means that if you join our program, you would be able to witness a plethora of theories and research and, and knowledge that it's not applicable to only a local place, but also to a lot of places in the world. And so we also have flexible content building development opportunities for doctoral students. So for example, I advocate for course content courses to have the students create study materials that is unique to your home country or unique to something that you care about. And you can actually incorporate that in your projects, right, in the doctoral courses, so that you would find that would be relevant to what you uh, are interested in exploring in the future. So our doctoral program also have mentorship and peer support groups. So I also advocate a lot for having students group together. So they, they constantly meet together. And so they support each other emotionally, socially, and professionally. And then we also would offer you networking opportunities via Zoom, you know, if you're joining online. So if, if, you, if you have a chance to visit us, you're also welcome to. So international students would take courses mostly in their home countries. So there is no GRE requirements and there is um, international admission process. So I listed that link. If you're international student, please also take a look and then contact us early if you would like to apply. So regarding the GRE requirements, 
I would like to read out the GRE requirements waiver. So the Webster University's Doctor of Education program has a vision and mission for transforming the status quo of inequities in the educational systems of the world. Advocacy, criticality, and social consciousness are part of our ethos and we stand by our values. Recently, we have witnessed a nationwide discussion of the use of standardized admission and assessments, particularly regarding GRE. We have made a decision together with our Office of Academic Affairs to waive the GRE requirements for fall admissions. Please reach out to me if you have any further questions.